Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. And yes, we are back in the office, ready to go uh, finish up this week strong. So I hope that you will join us today, 10 o'clock, our men's Bible study, and then at 6 o'clock, our uh, evening uh, prayer meeting and Bible study. We're studying the book of Revelation. No meal tonight and no uh, choir practice this evening. But come on and join us for Bible study, and you'll enjoy it. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to pick up in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And in verse, uh, we talked about verses 6 uh, and previous. But just remember, Paul is telling us that we have hope. Jesus is coming again, and we have to be ready. We're not to live as those who are asleep, those who are dead spiritually, those who have no concept of, of who Jesus is or what he's done for us no concept of the judgment that's coming. And he says that we're not to be ignorant like those who are in the world and not in Christ Jesus. Now, now pick up verse 6. He says, Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, <clears throat> but let us watch and be sober. <clears throat> we talked about that a little bit yesterday. And understand he's talking about we have to always be aware. Verse 7, for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. He's just talking about human nature there. He's talking about the typical... Uh, cycle of, of life among those who, well, for those who are part of this, this lifestyle. For believers, we're not to be that way. Now, we're supposed to sleep at night, but we're not supposed to get drunk at night or any time. We're supposed to be sober. That's what he's talking about. Verse 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Now, now let's get this straight. Let's understand what he's talking about here. Those of us who have been born again, those of us who are sons of the light, daughters of the light, those of us who have been taken out of the kingdom of darkness, that sin-filled world with that sinful nature, and transformed and transported into the kingdom of light, changed from the inside out. Those who are believers in Jesus Christ he says, we're of the day, so we have to be sober. Now, I, I think there's there's a double meaning there. Yes, I think he's talking about not uh, being drunk with wine or, or other types of alcoholic beverages, but he's talking about in the sense of being serious and, and understanding of the times. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be miserable. doesn't mean you have to go around with a frown on your face. But what he's talking about here is that we have to live life as mature uh, Christians, as mature adults, living to please the Father. That's what he's talking about here. Now, he tells us how to do that. Here, here's the key. He says, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Does, does that sound familiar? Uh, Paul's going to expand on this in, in Ephesians chapter 6 when he talks about the whole armor of God. But look at what he says here, the breastplate of faith and love. See, our hearts are covered by that breastplate. He's, he's using the analogy of the Roman soldiers, probably those that he's been uh, chained to uh, at previous times and will be chained to again as he writes other letters. But these guys would wear those, those breastplates that would, would protect them somewhat from the arrows that would fly or the, the swords that would be swung at them. It would protect that most uh, important thing, your heart. Well, understand that's what Paul tells us over and over again, that we're to guard our hearts. And the way we do that is by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the Father, faith in the Son, faith in the Holy Spirit, placing our faith in the, the gospel of Jesus Christ that tells us that he died on the cross of Calvary for our sins, was buried, and rose again. So our hearts are guarded by that faith, that, that belief, that knowledge that everything that we read in God's word is true and that we have that kind of hope. Then he says we also, it's the breastplate of faith and love. And understand, we're talking about this agape love at this point, this love that, that God has for us that we're supposed to have for him and that we have for those around us. Uh, love covers a multitude of sins. Remember that, Paul says that. And, and we need to recognize the fact that love is gracious and love is kind and love is patient. And we should respond to a sinful world with that kind of love ministering to their, their heart. And he says, as a helmet, the hope of salvation, the helmet covers the head, that other very important part of our anatomy. 
And, and in our minds, we have to be transformed. Remember, Paul says this in Romans chapter 12. He says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It starts here. Listen, I know that we're emotional people and emotions are not bad, but we have to understand that our our, our reason, our logic is important too. We have to come to that point where we are transformed by taking captive every thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, we'll talk about this some more tomorrow, but I want you to focus on that today. What thoughts are crossing your mind that you need to start taking captive unto the obedience of, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ? He'll change your life if you'll let him. Be blessed, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.